Welcome back to our um, Swing Trading Workshop um, and we are talking about the definition of the market um, and we were talking about changes of char character and how to quantify them. Uh, how could we see from the numbers, you know, where the confirmation of the reversal of the trend happens, occurs. Um, and one of the measures, you know, that we've talked about, you know, for this type of confirmation is the measure of volatility. Uh, so there is a question, does TradeStation or any software measure volatility? There are quite a few uh, volatility tools that you could use. Uh, you know, we had uh, uh, we had an October special with Corey Rosenblum and we've talked about the volatility of one of the things that he does is he uses he, the Bollinger Bands you know, a contraction of the Bollinger Bands would, you know, show the volatility because I'm using a very simplistic um, identification of the volatility because we just want to measure the reactions or the rallies in a more quantifiable way and uh, this would be, you know, the, the way for us to go about this, you know, if we want to have a very simplistic tool. Um, Another question, it seems there is no uh, UTED or SPRINT for secular trend reversal. It makes lower high at the top and higher low at the bottom. All right, so yeah, what about it? And I mean, in different instances, we're going to have different structures. So here in 2003, we're having uh, in March of 2003, uh, uh, higher low, slightly higher low relative to the previous two lows. So there is no spring in a way it kind of gives us a clue that you know uh, maybe the next rally is going to outperform any of the previous two rallies in the trading range that we have. But if you go to the example of 2009 then the low in phase C and we'll look at that, the low in phase C is going to be a lower low. Um, so it just depends on the availability of the supply. Um, um, in this structure. Um, so yeah, it's just, you know, uh, related to the specific um, instances. I don't think that there was a question there though. All right, so let's come back to our observation. So we're looking at the sign of strength backing up action, volatility decrease on this more meaningful reaction than anything that we've seen before. So this acts as a confirmation of the reversal and now we know at this instance right here and it took us, yes, a little bit more time than we would prefer but there were some other signs that we could use as well. Excuse me. Um, we basically early on still in uh, into the long-term trend because you have to think uh, in terms of the long-term trend. What is the long-term trend? Well, we definitely were in the long-term down. Then we shortly consolidated. Please note that this consolidation, the duration of this consolidation is not significant uh, relative to the previous consolidations that we've had on the move to the downside. Um, but then the way how the price behaves in this area tells us that there is a change of character and now from the long term down we are in the long term up. So therefore right away definitions for intermediate trend is going to be changed. We're going to be in the up at least right here coming out and then short term let's say if we're still here in this area also going to be up. What does this present to us as an opportunity if we're swing traders? Even if we're long-term swing traders or short-term swing traders, we're going to be extremely aggressive now, uh, swing trading to the upside. Because what, did, what kind of trades did we have on the way down? We only had swing trades that were to the downside. Unless we are uh, seeking some kind of uh, stocks that are counter trade uh, trend trading. 
um, the market, then we might have some positions to the upside. But those are going to be counted to the major trend in the down environment. So therefore, those are going to be extremely difficult to trade. Um, once we're in the up environment, then um, we're going to be extremely aggressive uh, with our either long-term or short-term swing trades. And the opportunities for us are going to be all about uh, any type of meaningful reactions or small account uh, trend reactions. So for instance, um, let's say that we are acting only after the confirmation. Um, uh, of the change of uh, behavior and the reversal of the downtrend. So on any of the lows that are giving us some kind of, you know, more or less significant reaction, after each of the reactions on the reversal, this is where we would be seeking to open the position uh, in the direction of the long-term uptrend, in the direction of the intermediate uptrend, and then and obviously in the direction um, of the reverse short-term trend. But for the short-term trades, we do need those type of reactions because it's out of those reactions that we're going to have the synchronicity with the market. Remember, we were going through the idea of the synchronicity with the market and that the best trades for us are always in line with the market. They are the easiest trades, they are most profitable trades, um, and they are so easy on the selection for us. Um, so any type of swing trader would be looking for initial reaction, reversal, and this is where we would be going into our selection process. Now, because these reactions are happening so fast, one of the things that I'm advising my students and my private clients is once you see the market starting going down, you really would like to start your, uh, going through the selection right away. So what does it mean? That means, again, that once you've entered here or here or here or here, the rest of the way, you're not doing anything. You shouldn't be doing anything. You should uh, be away from the market with all of the positions on and just enjoying the rally and enjoying the profits that your selection has made and actively managing those positions. Um, but there is no selection process in this area right here. Why? Well, because it's a little bit too late. You should have done your work in this area right here. So therefore, and because those reactions are so small and they happen so quick, once you hit a specific number, let's say like minus 1, minus 2, minus 3% on the reaction, each day you would have to go through your watch list for the stocks that are already on your watch list or you know, start creating those and uh, start identifying those opportunities. A question here. There is no structure for those short-term trades on a daily chart. Should we go uh, to intraday for structure to make short-term swing trades? This is a really good question. So the question is, on this reaction on the daily, let's say this reaction right here, there is no necessarily, you know, a Wyckoffian structure like we have here, like this whole trading range with a sign of strength in the backing up action. So you can answer this question, you know, uh, from two perspectives. Well, first of all, you are going to have some kind of smaller structure, um, and the idea of the going to the intraday is actually quite applicable here. You can, you know, apply the same ideas here in this area, in this area, in this area. What I'm saying is that you have to do it a little bit earlier. You have to go into your selection algorithm a little bit earlier. And just because this new slides, guys, and I'm going through this like first time, um, I'm definitely seeing how I can improve the slides for the next time, you know, and how to improve the delivery of these ideas. But one, so there's going to be a lot of um, verbal definitions, um, you know, today on this. But what's happening is once you start going into some kind of reaction after the area of the confirmation, your first thing that you should start doing is the selection process on daily basis.
And then secondly, um, as the price goes even lower, you kind of can anticipate what kind of reaction you are going to have um, in, in this instance. Well, think about why. Why would we anticipate a specific reaction in, at this spot, right here, 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 maybe here? Because after the confirmation, we can look at the history of what kind of volatility we are going to have during the rally. So we have in six, five, four, six, six, and those are even you know large reactions right here. So going down and coming to minus four, minus three, um, minus four and a half, five percent is quite acceptable. This is the current volatility that we are uh, having on a normal reaction. So therefore, you know, you can go to the intraday right here and uh, you could, uh, you know, work on your uh, more defined entry there, you know, on the reversal. But the second key here is going to be um, kind of like a follow normal reaction characteristics to unfold and then anticipate that the volatility is going to remain the same if with an assumption that the trend is going to continue. So those are going to be our great opportunities to come in and to go through the selection, expect the same type of the volatility on the reactions, and then go to a smaller time frame and expect some kind of reversal, short-term reversal. And out of the short-term reversal, intraday, you can use that, or just a reversal on the daily daily reversal as well on the significant bars, right? So, and that's going to be the process for a swing trader for us after the confirmation and during those healthy reactions. And this is the time when we have to uh, be extremely aggressive. Here, we are too late. We should be already in the position and this is not appropriate time for the swing trades that we're looking for. Okay couple of questions. Can you make some comments how to create this watch list? Yes, we're going to go through those. Um, what time intraday provides best fit for structural analysis? Well, I think it depends on the structure. Um, I mean, obviously, like in the areas like this, um, you would want to go, and because there are like two or three, four days, you, you would want to go to at least like an hourly chart. So, and I think the hourly chart is going to be sufficient. I don't want to push you to a lower time frame. If anything, I want you to, I want to push you more to the, uh, to the higher time frame. Uh, but on the points of entry, if you want to be more accurate and you want to be more precise, precise is probably a better word here. Um, then you definitely can go to the intraday. Um, and uh, I only would do this in case if you have time to follow the intraday uh, charts. Uh, because if you're, if you're working nine to five and you only have maybe like one opportunity per day to look at the market, maybe at the close, maybe in the evening, maybe in the morning, then you really don't have a lot of time to think about the intraday action. And my recommendation would be just to observe the daily reversal after the reaction, and that would be the day for you when you are most active with your position opening uh, and with your selections. But the key is to start creating the watch lists during the reactions so that we wouldn't have to, um, uh, to be extremely busy you know, at the bottoms here. When we see a V bottom, is the bar analysis sufficient? Um, for what? Uh, for the reversal? Yes, absolutely, because uh, even with the V bottom, you would have some kind of reversal there. Uh, for identification of the um, trading ranges, again, uh, you know, with the V type of bottom like this here, you're still going to have some areas where the trading range is going to be there, so you can definitely uh, uh, go and figure this out. V bottom has a specific way of how it unfolds, so you have to understand that. You have to understand the oversold condition uh, extremely well and how it's being reversed. So, and you can do this both in, in either of the time frames. Either it's an intraday time frame or um, 
you know, uh, a daily time frame. This is an interesting question. Uh, will both swing type uh, traits before confirmation, so before the sign of strength in the back up action, be more risky and not appropriate for trading? So the question is all about this area right here. Uh, as we're having the back up uh, action and uh, a sign of strength right here. What is appropriate here for swing traders? And I would say that anything um, is appropriate here in this area, we're just using the definition of the change for a much longer term trend, right? Where we could become more aggressive here in our swing trading and further down the road here. And then we still could swing trade even this swings right here, even within the structure. So this swing is still within the structure here. We could trade any of the swings that we have um, in the down market right here because as swing traders, we don't really care. We just want to have a good swing to the upside. So all of these swings are appropriate. Even the smaller ones, if you are very confident in your swing trading, you can find the selection where uh, you will find the stocks that will outperform. And it naturally happens in the market because some of the stocks are going to be more attractive based on their valuation, you know, potential valuation into the future uh, for the institutions, and they're going to outperform on the swings. And it's a totally appropriate to swing trade this, uh, this moments right here, this, this rallies. So therefore, when we come to uh, the last trading range, that confirms the reversal, the swing to the sign of strength rally right here um, it is also going to be traded. Now, maybe in the future workshop, I'll have some material on how to trade those swing trades, uh, you know, during the down markets. But because it doesn't happen that often, there is no really need for us to even do that. Um, and we could uh, profit from the down market in so many multiple different ways. You know, we could just um, open the, uh, you know, inverse ETF position or maybe, uh, you know, options to the downside and just be in line with the market. Um, uh, but the key for our today's discussion is just to define what the mar where the market is and then just uh, become more aggressive with our swing trades. Now let's look at the continuation of this and this is extremely important because then the next question usually that comes from students or clients is about their accumulation area and usually the tendency here when volatility starts to increase is to think that this is it, we're done and now we're going to go down. So and it's a definite faulty thinking on our part. Um, we have to be more um, specific as to the definition, what the trend is. Um, so let's look how it all unfolds. First of all, let's note how volatility has been decreasing going through all of those reactions. So all of those reactions are extremely healthy on the way up. We have the confirmation in this area for the long-term trend up. And then suddenly we're coming in and we're having the largest reaction to the downside. It actually should be a little bit more. I'm not extremely precise on this reaction. So you can see that I took this high and I went up to here. It should be up to here. So maybe like six, five, six, seven. Uh, with an exception of this reaction right here, everything else is below that number. So in a way, quantifiably, it shows to us that this is a change of character and that this move to the upside, at least for now, is done. And at the minimum, it doesn't mean that we're going to go down, but at the minimum, we're going to consolidate. And during this consolidation, we have to define what is it going to be. Is this going to be a distribution, or is it going to be a reaccumulation with the further resumption of the trend and continuation? How do we do that? Well, obviously, we're going to go through the structural analysis, and we're going to you know, talk about uh, the number of tests, the second point of fear, uh, phase C, uh, change of character on the way out. Um, but on the supply and demand uh, side, uh, what we would be interested in is 
uh, a decrease in volatility if this is a reaccumulation, and then increase of volatility to the downside if this is a distribution, and decrease of volatility you know, to the upside if this is a distribution. And we're seeing here how volatility is actually slightly increasing, increasing, and then on the next reaction, decreasing. What's happening with the rallies? Smaller rally, higher, a bigger rally, larger rally. So we're seeing how going into this area right here, volatility to the upside increases, and volatility to the downside decreases. So therefore, that that area right here is our confirmation of a potential reaccumulation. Now, a more interesting question with a you know, definition of um, a trend based on the volatility is what are the spots in the trading range after we have confirmed a long-term trend? What is the first spot here that we could start trading? to the upside. And I would say that for us, swing traders, that spot is actually going to be all about phase C. Why? Because the assumption here is that the new long-term trend is established and that the current consolidation is indeed going to be a reaccumulation. And therefore, the first favorable spot for us to trade it is going to be phase C in this downsloping range. Um, so here is our first opportunity. Our second opportunity is going to be on the sign of strength bars. Our third opportunity is going to be all around the backing up action. And our fourth opportunity is going to be on the breakout of that backing up action. So instead of uh, here, if we are not sure, you know, in this area where we are, uh, we might be thinking that maybe this is just still phase B which will be an arrow, uh, and we are not actively trading this range, um, and we are starting to actively trade after the confirmation. During a stepping stone, after the long-term trend has been established, all of these points are appropriate for us uh, to start swing trading and being more aggressive right away. It's the idea of resumption of the trend. A trend, a resumption of the leadership in the stocks that you've picked uh, for your swing trading and resumption of the momentum. And it happens the same way, right? So look at the uh, sign of strength rally, 8%. Uh, larger than any of the down moves, uh, larger than any of the percentages on the up move right here. So we're definitely seeing that the rally has changed and then the reaction is definitely changing as well relative to the volatility that we've had before. So a continuation. Okay, great. Then the next chart. And I'm, here I'm going to go a little bit faster because now that you know we went through the concepts, uh, I think what's important for us is just to cover the, uh, this and then uh, you know to, uh, to go to another material. Uh, and I would encourage you to, after the workshop, um, you know, to have these slides in front of you and just go really like reaction um, by reaction, you know, in the definition of um, all of these points. As the market goes up in 2005, we have another change of character. Um, and we're kind of seeing that we had like, you know, 4% declines, 3% declines, now almost 8% decline. So not a very drastic decline. Uh, that would define, you know, more of this um, kind of like a, a secular lows for sure. Uh, it's more of the cyclical low and we could expect some kind of consolidation. We're seeing the next large reaction, you know, kind of like the same type of volatility, the next large reaction, the same type of the volatility. And out of all of them, and I didn't put it here, but out of all of them, you are going to have the rallies in decrease of the volatility. That's basically going to tell you that we are going to go up at some point. Um, so I'm kind of missing a couple of um, uh, green boxes here. But in this particular case, in the last one, um, we're seeing how the rally is starting to outperform and the volatility on uh, reactions is just regular reactions. And those are the type of reactions where we would want to establish our swing positions 
where we would want to go through the selection process and identify the traits that are going to be available to us, the leadership that's going to be available to us on this move to the upside. And we're still thinking that the long-term trend is up. There is really nothing uh, in all of these reactions, you know, like six and a half, eight, six and a half, eight, and previous to that, we had uh, seven and a half, maybe eight percent as the largest reaction. We've never seen anything um, like we've seen at the beginning of the bear market, where the reaction is. Look at this reactions: F minus fifteen, uh, eight, seven, fifteen, ten, ten, twenty-one, twenty-eight, thirty-four. So this is not the type of volatility that we're seeing on the way up, even on the reactions that seems to be like the largest reactions um, uh, in the uptrend. And only with this reaction right here, finally we get into the number where we're seeing that volatility has increased drastically. It's larger than anything that we've seen on the way up. So this constitutes a change of character and a change of character for the whole move since 2003 that we've seen. And that would be an early indication of a possible either distribution or a possible much longer term reaccumulation. So let's look at that. And here we go again. And it kind of resembles the same picture that we've had in 2000 and 2002, right? So first change of character, increase of the volatility, largest move down in all of the reactions in the cyclical move up. Then we are having a consolidation. Through this consolidation, we're still having a quite high volatility on the way down. So that confirms that uh, the increase of volatility suggests a distribution rather than a reaccumulation. Um, once we go into the uh, um, consolidation, uh, we are going to have some kind of continuation of that um, newly established trend with the bearish change of character. And we're seeing that um, on the way down, volatility increases even more. Um, so here, you, you, know, you should be uh, um, uh, so confident that we're already in the, uh, in the uh, potential distribution right here. We definitely want to see the confirmation of the trend with the lower lows, lower highs, which we observe here in all of these instances. And we're seeing that still volatility is really high. I mean, all of these numbers to the downside, they're just like huge numbers. They, they are not the numbers where we are reacting, you know, 5%, 7 8%. Uh, these are big, big numbers. So uh, environment has changed, and therefore our tactics for our swing trading is also going to change. So from uh, uh, upswing trading, we are going into the downswing trading mode and we are selecting the candidates that are outperforming the market to the downside rather than to the upside. Let's look at 2009 range and here again, look at the volatility, 35 on the way down. During the range itself, quite a high volatility on the way down, 22, 26, uh, 15, 24 going into phase C and then the next rally um, and the next reaction, this is where the confirmation comes that we are done with the long-term trend to the downside. Uh, look at this rally, 43%, larger than any of the numbers to the downside. We're definitely having the rally that is much more than any of, uh, of the rallies that we've experienced in the trading range, so a change of character by itself. And then more importantly, on the backing up action, look at the volatility numbers right here. We're not even exceeding a 10%. So it's very reminiscent of what has happened in 2003. It's very reminiscent of what has happened um, in any of the reaccumulation ranges that we've seen. Um, so, and this acts as a confirmation. So how would we trade this? Well, obviously, as I mentioned before, we would be swing trading this, we would be swing trading this, um, but we would, not, we would not be very aggressive. It's only as the character of this rally changes, we might become a little bit more aggressive, let's say in this area right here, 
uh, just judging by the first momentum move, let's say, out of this condition, and how the price actually reacts, we could observe that these reactions are somewhat different than the reactions in the trading edge that we've had right here, let's say, on this rally. Uh, there is more supply in this area than in this area, so that suggests the continuation, and therefore, we could establish, you know, some swing positions uh, to the downs, uh, to the upside um, in this area. How would we do this? Again, we would be looking for reactions, right? So reaction to the downside, minus 5%, you go to your selection, and then you go uh, to your, um, you know, you create the watch list, and we'll talk about how we're going to do this in a second, um, and then you're going through your uh, trade management, you know, for the trades that you've established. Once we've experienced a sign of strength in the backing up action and we're confirmed to the upside, then we could become more aggressive. And we um, are going to swing trade um, to the upside in a more aggressive manner. Let's go through this um, a little bit faster. Okay, so this is our backup. Um, so any type of reactions on the way up now, here, 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 that are going to be in line with the reactions of the first rally, that are going to be in line with the volatility that we've had on this move to the upside, are going to be appropriate places for us to consider opening the positions in different stocks, and obviously there's going to be some kind of rotation between the industry groups as to what's going to outperform on the specific reaction, and we want to catch that. And that's how we're going to rotate our selection through this whole rally. Then uh, we are having more of the change of character right here. And I think that this would be extremely difficult um, change of character for us, you know, to act upon. Obviously, because we're thinking at this point that we are in the reaccumulation, any type of rallies we could trade or swing trade. So even like this type of rallies right here are appropriate to trade, but you have to be extremely selective. And during this period of time, your average holding period is going to be less. Is going to be less than in this area right here. Think about why, guys. Still here, we are in the structure, right? We're still in the trading range. So our rallies are going to be extremely aggressive to the upside. They're going to take less time. They're going to be more volatile. And they also have a very limited potential to the upside. Uh, once we are clearing the trading range, we are going up, and we can hold our swing um, positions uh, for a much longer period of time. A much shorter swing trade strategy is more appropriate if you want to trade the trading range. One of my suggestions is just neglect this range uh, completely and wait until you are actually experiencing a potential phase C or a back in action. Uh, and that way you will be more in line with much larger moves of the market. So for instance, right here, as we're looking at the structure, I'm putting the down slope right here. Uh, first test, second, third test, second point of fear, so potential phase C, sign of strength backing up action, please note how it comes exactly to this support level, uh, which is great. Um, and uh, our first positions that would be appropriate for the swing trade is going to be right here on phase C. Our second position uh, entry could be here on the sign of strength. Our third is going to be here. And our fourth entry, and I'm just putting the parallels here, it's going to be somewhere here on the breakout. So why am I not using this breakout right here? Because of the sloping structure. Uh, we are down sloping, so therefore my breakout is going to be on the down slope rather than on the more horizontal. Um, and all of those places are going to be extremely valuable to us as swing traders to open those positions, you know, to go through the selection. All right. Question. What if reaccumulation becomes a distribution? And in this case, it's kind of, you know, where we could potentially 
go with this, right? Because this first change of character on the flash crash in 2010 is actually quite substantial. It's in line with the uh, declines that we've had in 2007 for a major change of character on um, uh, before the bear move. So, and let me just refresh your memory here. So, I'm talking about this change of character, 12%, and look at what's happening afterwards. Volatility is increasing, increasing, increasing. Then also here in 2000, uh, 14, 15%, and then volatility just increasing, increasing, increasing. Now, what is happening here in this instance? Yes, we do have quite a substantial volatility to the downside, and I think it was just because of that flash crash. If the flash crash would not happen, we probably would have a more normalized, you know, 7, 8, 9% of change of character. Um, but here, important thing is, again, it's about the volatility and how it behaves. From 13%, we're going to 12, to 11, to 8, and then we kind of go into a much more normalized reactions that we have on the way up. So therefore, in the reaccumulation, we are expecting that volatility is going to decrease, and that we, with that, our uh, first point of entry is going to be on the potential phase C rather than after the sign of strength in the backing up action. The exception to that is going to be if volatility in this range still continues to increase and therefore that's going to become a distribution and therefore our swing trades are all going to be to the downside. So that's how we would deal with that. In this case, only because of the flashcards, in my opinion, we have such a high volatility, but the rules of engagement are still the same. Low volatility, increase on the rally, the biggest rally, the you know, in terms of any of the percentages, whether of the rally or of the reaction, and then quite normalized, um, you know, uh, reactions here. 2011. Uh, look at the healthy change of character with 8% here. It does not suggest um, a big bear market. It's only when we have this shakeout in 2011 that goes to 20%, um, there is a talk of you know, structural damage and uh, that we are um, going to experience uh, you know, a bear market. And I remember that time. Uh, you know, talking to a lot of analysts here in their thoughts and they were just like, you know, this is a, too much of the decline, we are just basically in the bear market right now. But what's not happening with this bear market is, um, uh, you know, increase of the volatility. If this is the largest volatility that we've experienced to the downside, where is the continuation of that volatility? The next move shows us a decrease of volatility. Next change of character is decrease of volatility, and next reaction is decrease of volatility. So throughout this whole structure, um, and considering also that the rally has started to outperform any of the volatility numbers to the downside, any of the rallies that we've had to the upside are also are being outperformed on this rally in a possible structural sign of strength in the backing up action. Uh, this whole area suggests that instead of the bear market, we're going to have a continuation to the upside, so the rules are the same. And again, um, with this understanding, our first point of entry, because this is going to be considered a reaccumulation, is going to be at phase C. And again, you know, we just identifying these points of entry based on the market synchronicity, and then we're going to go into the selection. And then um, the second point of entry is going to be on the way up on the sign of strength bar. Uh, third entry is going to be after the backing up action. And here, because there is more supply, we need some kind of test that comes here. So here's our third point of entry. And then a breakout, which is going to happen right here. So oh, those are the four points of entry based on the market. Uh, and you can either trade the market, but if you're trading the stocks, when trading the stocks, these are the points of uh, entries that are going to give you the timing for you to initiate the um, positions in those stocks that are on your watch list. And I assume that when the stocks are on your watch list, you already went through the leadership characteristics um, for those stocks and you are identifying the, the stocks that are potentially are going to outperform the market and the peers. 
And then for a short-term swing trader, obviously any of these points are great, but also on the way up, on the next rally, any type of healthy reactions that are basically not undermining the volatility numbers on the, at the more significant spots are going to be great places for us to consider opening those positions. Um, and this is where rotation is going to happen, like we've seen in the latest rally. Uh, we started with the financials, they were the most aggressive. We started with the energy, we started with materials and industrials. And we had a little bit of the uptick um, in the last couple of two, three days in the last week in the tech uh, sector um, that was heavily underperforming. Um, the whole rally. So therefore, you're going to be dealing with the rotation if you're a short-term swing trader in this area right here, and you're going to be dealing with more of the uh, uh, longer-term swing positions in the area where uh, the market is showing, you know, reversal and the confirmation. All right, question. Um, Does it mean that if the first reaction, change of character, has the largest volatility, that next one are potentially, uh, uh, okay, hold on a second. Does it mean that if the first reaction, change of character, has the largest volatility, the next ones uh, are potentially, oh, I don't understand, the, uh, the next ones, then we are in the potential air commotion. Okay, let me rephrase this question. I think I understand it now. So the question is, if we are in the change of character, and if volatility, and if this is the largest volatility in the whole structure, does it mean that we are um, in the reaccumulation? So as an idea, yes, but there are definitely some nuances that you can observe even on this chart. So for instance, here we are having a big change of character. Uh, and this acts as a change of character to this rally, so we might even like you know think about this as a change of character. <coughs> Excuse me. And the key here is the decrease of the volatility, as the volatility to the uh, is decrease of the volatility to the downside when the uh, volatility increases to the upside, and we can observe this from here. Uh, in this example. Excuse me, guys. Hold on. In this example here, we are um, uh, experiencing the largest re uh, reaction here. So volatility increases from all of the reactions on the upside, and we still have a larger reaction right here. But it's not necessarily a change of character. That's just a continuation. Again, the idea here is that we want to observe a change in volatility from the largest point, which usually comes on the change of character, as you've correctly observed, uh, but not necessarily that it's going to be the largest in some of the instances. Um, the key is to observe the change of the volatility on the next reactions uh, and change of the volatility to the upside, which is also going to increase. All right, um, 2013, um, I'll let you go through this yourselves. Um, uh, it's a little bit maybe uh, um, some spots could be a little bit confusing here, so let me just go through one of them. So for instance, um, all of the healthy reactions, and this is exactly where we would be looking to open our swing positions. This is exactly where we would be observing some kind of rotation in our swing trading. Uh, these are the swings that we would be looking for to take. As a long-term swing trader, we would be looking to take this whole thing. Uh, so therefore, our change of character here is going to be extremely important for both the short-term and long-term swing traders as a point of synchronicity for the exit. Uh, and once we have that, um, change of character, again, we're looking for the contraction of the volatility. So it increases a little bit here, contracts, the rally increases, so we are encouraged here, um, then slightly increases, and then decreases again. Um, because we are in the established long-term uh, uptrend, in the intermediate-term uptrend, 
any type of reactions uh, where we could observe the decrease of volatility is going to be great for us to initiate the position. So what do I mean by that? So for instance, if volatility slightly increases, here on the decrease of the volatility, that would be an appropriate place for us to open the position. Even this reaction right here with 5%, um, slight increase from the previous reaction, but it's still smaller than this two that defined the change of character, that defined the range for us that we are looking at. And here in this range, we might be thinking, okay, well, here is our range, and here is our phase A, sign of weakness, uh, up thrust action, uh, for potential phase B, and then potential phase C. So it's even if it's slightly increasing, and we know that going into phase C, we might have some kind of short-term weakness based on the availability of supply in phase C. So therefore, any type of reversals are going to be great places for us to open its position and not to wait for the confirmation, not to wait for the sign of strength in the backing up action, uh, you know, to uh, enter the position. We've already done that. Uh, with the major reversal of the long-term trend. We already done this with the intermediate-term reversal. We are what we assume in the reaccumulation pattern, and therefore we are going to be extremely aggressive with our swing trades at the lows specifically in phase C. Um, and also, it's quite appropriate to trade the swing trades even within the structure uh, of the reaccumulation. And we're only waiting for um, a true change of character, which um, we look at here, and it seems like this is something of the concern. This is something that we would be looking for, um, you know, to have maybe a stop in action further down the road, having a consolidation, and we kind of see that how we are climacting here, uh, and basically after that we are uh, in the consolidation. Uh, it's a little bit more hectic here with the consolidation, but the idea is the same. Um, we're having some kind of change of character, and then we're looking at the volatility numbers, and they're contracting. So therefore, we're still assuming that we are in the reaccumulation. We're identifying potential phase C, and we are trading this swing to the upside. Change of character, and then again, we're going through the same process until we come to this point. And at this point, again, 13% is a quite considerable number for us. Hold on a second. Um, so how would we be dealing with this? Well, this is more of the scenario in 2011 where we had um, a range at the top, shake out, and then we are having a decrease in the volatility. Uh, so therefore, this acts more as a reaccumulation to the previous trend. Obviously, there is a distribution pattern right here, and we could observe how uh, from healthy reactions, even here on the way up, we are starting to see how from, let's say, 2%, 2.4, 2, 2, 3, 1, 5, we are starting to see um, the reactions that are actually um, much more than that. So volatility increases, suggesting that we're going to see, you know, some kind of lower prices even, uh, uh, you know, to these two areas right here at least. And as we go even further down to... Uh, check this October uh, 14th low, volatility has increased drastically. It's on par with, again, as I said, with volatility here in 2011, 20%, uh, with volatility here on the flash crash, 13%, uh, with volatility here in 2007, 12%, and volatility here in 2000, 14%. That's usually how bear markets are starting. Now, the difference between a reaccumulation with this type of the volatility, like we did here in 2011, is that volatility decreases uh, to the downside, and then volatility increases to the upside. So let's just see whether that's going to happen. And we kind of see that on the next reaction, uh, you know, almost a double decrease here. And then we're seeing that the rally is starting to outperform. Um, you know, any of the rallies, and then the backing up action is also quite negligible. So this is where we would be extremely aggressive, and then at this point, 
we would be uh, less aggressive, but we still would be assuming that this is a reaccumulation, so that would be an appropriate place for us to open a swing position. And please note, even if we go up right here, and then we go down in the bear market, what does it matter to us in terms of establishing the swing positions and actually trading this swing? It doesn't matter. We're still going to profit here, and our task is just to get out of uh, this um, down move um, once it starts to happen. Because as a swing trader, we are much more flexible than long-term investor. This is the last slide on this. Uh, 2015 going into 2016, again, we're seeing a change of char character. Suggesting a consolidation, uh, here we see somewhat of the decrease of the volatility, but the result of that decreased volatility is a sign of weakness, failures on the rallies to reach new highs, so suggesting some kind of structural weakness and suggesting some down move, which we do have. Again, it's on par with the 2011, 2014, 2015, uh, in the beginning of 2000 and 2007 uh, changes of character. In all of those instances, we have minus 10 plus uh, increase in the declines. And in some instances, like in 2000 and 2007, as we saw, that um, volatility continued to be present in the market, which created the bear market. In 2011, 14, and 15, we saw initial change of character with this same type of volatility number, and then we saw how volatility started to decrease, normalize into the sign of strength backing up action, and that basically constituted that we are in the reaccumulation pattern. So therefore, any type of trades, especially after the confirmation, are appropriate to the upside. And any type of healthy reactions are going to be the places where we're going to be swing trading um, our rotational model between different industry groups. Change of character. Uh, and change of character uh, at this 3.5% actually suggested more of the reaccumulation than the distribution. It's not that significant. So um, a confirmation of that comes on uh, further contraction uh, into these two lows. And as with the flash crash, Brexit just creates an additional volatility that you have to, and this is a nuance right here, that we have to account for. Um, as in um, uh, an ex kind of like an extraordinary event, an event that uh, should be discounted in a, in a sense of um, production of that volatility uh, and the influence on the future price action. Um, so you could wait a little bit and just to see what kind of price reaction we're going to have to this event. And we, we have a really good rally, 6.3%, uh, uh, which basically outperforms any of the numbers except for this one. Um, and this rally is definitely much, much better than any of the rallies. Uh, and any of the volatility that we've had before. Confirmation here on the LPS, and then we are going to become extremely aggressive on the way up. Again, because we're coming in and thinking that this is the reaccumulation, phase C is an appropriate place for us to open the, our first position out of the reversal, um, sign of strength bar as a second point of entry, uh, backing up action, or a smaller backing up action, point number three, and then a breakout, point number four, and then everything else is going to be for smaller short-term trades for us. The same here with the uh, November 8 election. Look at the move to the downside. 4% still in line with the idea of the reaccumulation. Um, and then look at the volatility, decrease, decrease of the volatility. So if we identify in first, second, third test, uh, second point of fear, potential phase C. Here's our first point of entry. Here's our second point of entry. 
uh, sign of strength in the backing up action right here, or a smaller sign of strength in the backing up action. So you could enter again right here. And then any smaller reactions are still in line uh, with the idea of rare accumulation and the confirmation of the uptrend. So therefore, a question, what is the current market trend? So in this case, we are saying that the long-term uh, trend is up, intermediate trend up, and then at this point, a short-term uh, uh, trend is up as well. But the more interesting question is what opportunities are available to trade in the current market environment, and specifically at this point. And this is kind of like the question that we are asking ourselves consistently during the market outlook sessions, right? What are the opportunities here? So maybe already in your mind you have a very clear idea because one of the ways how I teach is I repeat one material over and over and over again. So I've repeated this many, many times. At this point of time, what kind of opportunities we're going to have? Most likely we're only going to have short-term upswing, which is going to be uh, either intraday right here, or it's going to be um, a two to three to five to seven days type of smaller short-term swing trades. And then the next move, uh, more significant move, is going to be probably to the downside. And then the question is, how are we going to trade that? Well, you either stay away from it and you're just concentrating on the next um, upswing ideas that are going to come on this reaction, during this reaction, or you're going to um, go to the idea uh, with which we started, with synchronicity and how we are actually counter-trading uh, counter the uh, bull market. Um, and you're finding you know, the stocks that are maybe on some kind of reaction after a very quick move to the upside already in the position to go down. One of the stocks that we've discussed, you know, um, on the previous uh, market outlook session uh, and Bruce brought that stock was Vodafone, right? The chart looks so bearish and actually, you know, it seems like there's going to be a continuation if we're going to have some kind of reaction uh, in the market. So that type of strategy you can develop, again, uh, I would advise only for more advanced uh, students, you know, to practice this type of counter uh, trend uh, swing trading. Um, and for those of us who are more of the beginners intermediate um, type of uh, traders, just stick with the main trend, which is what? Which is up, up, and up again. So after the reaction, you know, you also can ask the question if you're doing this type of analysis on the volatility in the way how I've done it here. What kind of reaction are we going to expect here? Well, a normalized reaction is going to be in line with maybe like between 1% and 2%. Um, a more substantial reaction for the idea of the reaccumulation is going to be in line with these numbers. 3.5%, 4 4.5%, uh, maybe even 5% which led here for the to the distribution, but I still would be thinking that with this type of volatility to the upside, we might have some, you know, profit taken at this point, um, and uh, this first reaction might be a little bit more substantial than, let's say, this too. So I would be thinking about like between three and maybe six percent uh, for uh, any type of reaction that we might have here that could create uh, another potential uh, reaccumulation range. And obviously any type of healthy reactions, if we're going to have a reaction, a healthy reaction right here with an idea of the continuation, that will just continue its move to the upside. And what we are looking for here is a reversal pattern or as somebody suggested, you know, going into the trading range on the intraday and establishing the reversal pattern right there uh, and then continuing with the upside. The way how the market developed in the last couple of days, um, we saw a change of character bar, we saw an attempt to go up. If that's going to fail, that's probably going to lead us to the change of character. Um, but again, you know, I'm thinking that with the current market, we're probably going to have more of the reaccumulation type of change of character rather than a distribution. All right, some questions and we're going to close up this section.
it seems that the stop loss for point number one entry is hit on the election day. Um, and we are talking about this day right here. So uh, this is futures, and I apologize, I probably should have brought just a cash market and you know to put it on the slides. It's just more convenient for me because I trade this instrument very actively. Um, so this is the reflection of the overnight action here. So when we came um, on Wednesday after the election, the market was already right here and that was the open. So you would not see this on the cash chart um, and basically you would just go in and it's still within the uh, sign of strength bar area right here. So that would be our second point of entry. Our first point of entry was on this bar right here after the reversal of the potential phase C which I think that is going to be extremely difficult to enter just on the anticipation of the election. So uh, I personally, all of my trades were like done um, and I was just expect, you know, just waiting for the election day to happen. Okay, great. Now that we went through this um, uh, process of identifying the timing the uh, of synchronicity with the market and now that we understand when during the market uh, different market structural points we are most effective as swing traders and how we could make a definition give a definition to the market uh, trends in different time frames whether they are long term intermediate or short term now we can start thinking that during this opportunity, so let's say that we are um, a short-term swing trader, then any of opportunities with the healthy reactions like this are going to be opportunity for us to go through the selection process and identify the sectors, industry groups, and specific stocks that we would be selecting to trade in the direction of the trend, of the market trend. Um, and obviously for the long term uh, swing trader, all of those spots that we've discussed are appropriate. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, uh, one, two, three, four. So all of those are also going to be appropriate for us to go through the selection. My only um, nuance here for those of us who are trading this type of swings is to think that your selection process is going to take some time, right? You're still going to go through quite a lot of stocks. So one of the ways to prepare for it is to do this process as the market goes down. And as the market goes down, you have multiple days here to think about your selection process and go through quite a lot of those stocks, uh, industry groups, uh, which you want to select um, uh, for your next move to the uh, upside. Because you're assuming that we're still in the reaccumulation, reaccumulation, reaccumulation. All right, so let's talk about the selection process, right? And this is something that um, I thought that I wanted to simplify as much as possible and yet to show you different ways of how we would look at those, to show you different tools. And obviously a lot of the tools that we've already discussed. Um, so my challenge to those of you who are students of the Advanced Wake of course is, first of all, uh, repeat the material. Secondly, find something that you haven't um, concentrate your attention on. You know, use this opportunity effectively. You know, don't withdraw from this conversation. And one of the ways that I wanted to show you this selection is through uh, the tools that stockcharts.com uh, provide us with. And obviously those tools are going to be available on other platforms as trading platforms, software platforms as well. So it's not something that is going to be extremely unique to stock charts, but there's going to be some of the tools that are going to be extremely unique you know, to stock charts. And I'm actually not going to talk about all of them, um, but kind of like the main ones, the ones that um, 
you know, I would prefer to use. And one of the first ways, you know, to go about this, and we've discussed this before, but this is in, in a more systematic way how I'm going to show this to you, is to um, uh, use the top-down uh, approach. So what does it mean, top-down approach? As we give the definition to the market trend, and let's say that long-term trend is up, uh, intermediate uh, trend is down uh, and then the short-term trend is down and we are suspecting that we are in some kind of reaccumulation pattern because the move to the downside was not quite significant or if it was significant let's say 10 to 15 percent to 13 percent um, we are seeing that on the next move there is some kind of volatility contraction so we might be assuming that we are in the reaccumulation um, and therefore, we would be going through our selection process. Uh, the top-down approach would identify first the sectors that are outperforming the market um, uh, for the specific period of time. So again, on your, um, if you are a member, um, and I believe this is, this could be also for. Uh, free subscription as well uh, and see because I'm a member I'm not sure whether you know that exists for uh, for free or not but on the members page uh, you can go to the sector summary and I believe let's just let me just look really quickly do we have it here um, yeah, there are other ways, and I'm just going to show you right now uh, as well. You can go to the sector performance charts. So here we are, uh, and you can define the period, um, you know, which you want to cover uh, in terms of the selection of the sectors first, right? So top down, market, sectors, industry groups, stocks. So let's say that we are interested in um any of the sectors that were outperforming one second let me just close this oh, okay I can't all right so any of the uh, sectors that were outperforming in January and February lows of 2016, so most recent example. So one of the things uh, that you can do with stock charts here, if you are um, just a regular uh, non-paid member, is to go to this performance uh, sector performance chart, and then this is a very great feature here because as I'm contracting the number of days here, uh, what it does, it defines the time frame for me from 21st of November 2016 to 16th of December. So I can find exactly the days that I need. So I know that uh, let's say from January, on January 1st, let's say in 2016. Okay, so let's say, okay, January 11th, and then up to February 5th, and I believe we, uh, in February, we had the February 10th low. Yeah, so here is the, uh, in 22 days, for this historical period and again with the current market you're just going to have it right here and it's going to show you the same um, uh, you know the same uh, type of picture in terms of the, all of the sectors and which sector is outperforming so we're seeing how utilities are outperforming uh, how the materials are starting to outperform, how the industrials are starting to perform, how energy is starting to uh, outperform, and consumer staples, which actually then, um, you know, started to underperform, and the utilities were not necessarily the greatest sector right there. But you're going to go through all of them, and you're going to start identifying on the uh, uh, sector level what kind of groups you're going to um, choose for your potential swing trading. Um, so we started with the sector, 
then we went to the um, industry group. And here, um, looking at the example for the previous, um, that was on uh, August 15th, um, so for the previous three months, I'm looking for some kind of outperformance. And during that period of time, you know, three months before August 15th, technology sector was outperforming quite significantly. Um, so we want to go in into the details of that particular sector and start looking at the uh, what in let's say specific period of time outperforming in that sector. And here are all of the uh, groups that you know Stockchart has uh, for the technology sector, and we naturally would be inclined to go into this area right here. Now imagine that we are doing this analysis, and obviously August 15th maybe was not the greatest you know place to uh, conduct this analysis, but imagine that we are doing this analysis during some kind of reaction. And um, the reactions could be different, right? We saw that some of the reactions are going to be appropriate for more uh, long-term swing trader, and some of the reactions are going to be more appropriate for shorter-term swing trader. So um, uh, the dates here, the period, is going to define that reaction. So you're going to take, uh, and this is what I usually do. So. Um, you're gonna you're gonna look at the market, and you're gonna say, "Okay, um, I'm looking at let's say let's let's take a more recent example, and let's just go through this process." So let's say that we're looking at this reaction right here. Let me just bring up another software here because we are going to look. Yeah, well, I think that we could definitely start with, um, no, let's, let's just go to our website. I think it's going to be easier. One of the tools that you could successfully use uh, identifying sectors, industry groups in this uh, top-bottom approach is a heat map. And uh, actually, Wycoff Analytics, you know, provide you with this tool. It's being updated on a weekly basis. And one of the neat things about this particular uh, tool is that we could um, look at the historical uh, representation of the relative strength uh, for for the whole market, and that's that was the purpose for us to create the tool for our students, you know, to practice that technique. So, for instance, um, again, let's come back to stock charts. Let's pull out S and P, and let's just identify the dates here. So here's this reaction. We are starting the reaction on. November 25th, and then it lasts until we might say this day, which is the reversal day, December 5th. And what we basically want to do is during this reaction, which to us is a very healthy reaction, it's only uh, 1.7%, 1.8% right here, which is in line with previous reaction, which is less than the reactions that we've had in the trading range. So that suggests a continuation. And if we are um, a short-term swing trader, then this would be an appropriate uh, time for us to consider entering or re-entering these positions um, and considering a swing trade uh, to the upside. And we could be extremely aggressive here because all of the trends are in line. All of the trends are up. So let's look at that on the heat map. And here on the heat map, I'm going to enter and in the date range. And that's why it's so great, I think. 25th of November 2016. And then 
December 5th of 2016. So I'm basically extracting the data for outperformance of the uh, uh, in a specific period of time. And this specific period of time is very small. It's only you know two weeks or, or even less. But I want to see any type of changes. And um, the with this um, with the uh, sector changes, it's going to be a, probably a little bit more difficult because sectors are not gonna, are not going to change that much. But even with this limited data, we kind of seeing what is uh, where rotation is happening. So. Um, obviously, the dark, the green is the color that we would prefer for the leadership, and we're seeing how the materials started to outperform since the uh, election, industrials, energy as well. Um, we're seeing again um, the rotation that is happening primarily in energy and the financials. So those are the two sectors that are going to be extremely of interest to us. Anything else seems to be not that interesting. So I would be looking um, at first the sectors that have some kind of rotation from unfavorable or less favorable to more favorable and then I would be looking at the leadership. Uh, so these are the two ways how we would be looking at the heat map. So let's look at um, Financials. So financials were more exciting. And as we go into now um, more of the uh, industry group level, I'm looking basically for the same thing. Um, I want to identify first the leadership of the industry groups. So look through the top leadership uh, board and then identify some kind of rotation. So I'm seeing uh, capital markets, uh, insurances, um, we're having this type of the rotation that we're looking for. Um, and that would be in line, you know, for us to think about, uh, this is the rotation here, multi-sector holding from 38 to 19. Uh, what else? Mortgage finance, obviously we understand why the interest rates are going up. Uh, financial services as well. Uh, so any type of rotation is going to be uh, interesting to us and plus, you know, the, just the outperformance. Um, so let's look at one of them. Uh, let's say, let's start with the leadership, okay, regional banks. And again here, the idea is going to be the same and that is I want to look at the leadership and I want to look at um, you know, through all of the stocks, and I want to look at um, a rotation. So we took the leadership, but now let's look at the rotation. I see that from 11 it went to 5, and I want to look at the chart right away. Okay, and here we go, and this is weekly, so let's go to the daily. And we're seeing that um, uh, on December uh, 5th, this is uh, the last right here on December 5th so we are right here and, and during this whole period so we are um, conducting this research from November 25th because you have to realize that starting from November 25th which is right here to about December 5th, I'm sorry, 25th to 5th, November 25th to December 5th. And I think I have to create the slides, you know, in this logical sequence, then it would be more visible here. But that's okay, you know, guys, I'm uh, kind of showing you a little bit of a uh, new material here. Um, so what's happening here, you have to realize that your selection process, and this is a big nuance, and this is something that I want to put you in your notes you are not necessarily going to look on December 5th for the best candidates because the reaction has already been unfolding. You will have to understand that your selection based on the, let's say, heat map tool or any type of relative comparative tools are going to start 
with the reaction when it starts. So you're going to start looking at this point for the candidates for you to trade. And then as you identify a lot of prior leadership, still the sector, the industry group, and this specific stock outperforming, it's going to go on your watch list right on November 25th. And in your watch list, you're going to say that my point of entry here is going to be just a breakout trade. And my goal is going to be to swing trade the momentum, the continuation of the momentum that we've had since the election right here. Because a lot of institutional interest, a lot of momentum, and this particular swing trade is just going to be a continuation. And my goal is going to be pick up this type of swing um, out of the consolidation area. I'm recognizing that the consolidation, basically an upslope in consolidation, which suggests a lot of the strength behind it. Uh, because of this institutional participation. So therefore, I could expect the same type of swing. The character of this swing is going to be slightly different. It's probably going to be less, especially if we're going to have less of the demand on the second rally. Um, so therefore, in my on my watch list, I'm going to say that my point of entry is going to be maybe at 2275. And I might even have an open order with my broker you know, for this particular stock. Uh, and even though the market is still in the reaction here, I'm going to initiate this position just based on the leadership that this particular stock, industry group, and the sector has during this specific time. So let's see if we kind of got it, you know, from all of these conversations, all of this talk that I've done. Let's see what kind of questions and comments we have because I just basically went through the whole process of how we're looking at the market, we're looking at the selection. I'm not necessarily devoted a lot of time to the structure or the supply and demand. I touched upon this on this particular stock. But let's see if we have any comments, questions because this is basically it. The rest of the material that we're going to go through is going to be more specific to, uh, you know, selection ideas and then, you know, specific nuances. Does that make sense, guys? Right? Uh, do you kind of see where we're going with this? How we are going through the selection based first on the market definitions? looking for those opportunities where or when, where in the structure and when in terms of the timing we're going to go through the selection itself. Selection itself is going to be uh, done in a different way and we're going to go through different ways, um, you know, of how we would do this. And then uh, uh, we definitely will still need to do a structural analysis, supply and demand analysis, industry, peer industry group analysis, and so on and so forth. But that's basically, the, in a nutshell, you know, the, the whole process. Okay, so some questions. How does the method differ if trading futures, let's say e-minis? Um, so we we would come back just to the original picture right here with all of our definitions here, right? And we would be assuming kind of like the same um, idea as we're trading uh, in, in minutes. And I think I'm going to discuss this more during March workshop on the intraday. And I'm going to show you a lot of the examples of um, either my you know, personal trades with the minis because I'm extremely active in the e mini uh, with the mini instruments. Um, but the main idea, and I'm going to just give you an idea here, I'm not going to go into the details, is going to be still about the definition of the trend and then a confirmation and switch from a trade in one time frame to another time frame. So in a way, a good advanced uh, e mini trader um, is going to be flexible using different time frames for different trades. So what do I mean by that? So for instance here, 
uh, we are seeing some kind of change of character and we are having two scenarios, either decrease of volatility and therefore a reaccumulation or increase of the volatility and therefore a potential distribution. So based on these two scenarios, we would be um, playing this range differently. Right, so as the price goes down here and volatility decreases, we are assuming that we might be potential in the reaccumulation. So on the intraday level here, our points of entry are going to be identified, and at the minimum, our target is going to be around this area right here. Now around this area, either we're going to have an upthrust, so and therefore we might even close the position here, and we just might produce this type of swing trade. Um, or we're going to be looking for the confirmation of the backing up action. If or when the backup action is confirmed, we either are going to keep this position for the further gains and therefore our time frame is going to switch from intraday point of entry to short-term swing trade to long-term swing trade. And this is that um, I call this a universal trader. The universal trader does not really have a specific definition of the time frames where he or she trades, which he or she trades. A universal trader understands the opportunity as it comes in different time frames and with different instruments as well. So, and that's another layer, but I just want to time, uh, stay on the time frame here. So, as you recognize that this was a reaccumulation rather than um, a distribution on the backing up action and on the confirmation as the price leaves this trading range, your the the mentality of the universal uh, trader is going to switch from the short term swing to the long term swing trade, and he or she is going to utilize this whole opportunity of the move to the upside, and then again observing the change of character, the strategy is going to change here. And the strategy is going to be more trading the swings within the range and then identifying potentially a more longer term opportunity. Uh, so here that's going to be a shorter uh, term time frame. And here once you identify that opportunity again and you confirm it, you're from the short term time frame, you're going to switch to a long term time frame. And that's basically uh, an ideal an ideal swing trading that you have to perform. And this is what I'm personally striving for. Um, and that's why I'm calling this universal trader. Um, again, because the key to me, at least personally, is to is to go for the opportunities. It's not necessarily to go for a specific market, up or down. Direction is extremely easy to identify. I think opportunities are much more difficult because you could think of the opportunity not just as the directional opportunity, but also as a time frame opportunity, instrument opportunity, leverage opportunity. So all of those um, layers of opportunity have to be discussed, have to be considered. And you are more fluid as a trader if you are understanding that in a different environment you're going to have a different type of strategy. Uh, and by different type of strategy, uh, I don't mean that we're going to change our criteria as to how we select, you know, specific stocks. Or let's say in trading in Emenius, you know, we are uh, trading something there else. No, it's just going to be the same strategy, but uh, with in line with the uh, time frames that we should uh, we should use, and that's it. Uh, more on that in March uh, on the uh, during the intraday workshop. Um, you know, uh, I'm I'm excited about that workshop as well. I have a lot of material, a lot of new material that I want you know to to give to you guys in March. Um, so. Um, obviously, you know, we're in the middle of this workshop, but um, that's going to be a more appropriate time and place to discuss that. But really good question. Um, 
looking at stock charts, what is this? P and T Y point of entry is selection harder. Okay, I um, maybe this question could be rephrased. I don't quite understand the question. Looking at stock charts, P and T Y is selection harder. Yeah, maybe rephrase the question. Let's go to the next one. Did you go back and date for an example on selection for today? What would you see? Okay, yes, I did go back just to show you guys um, because we are not at the correct placement right now to initiate any uh, swing trades unless they are very, very short-term swing trades, right? Uh, so just because of the function of where we are with the market. Uh, right, so let's just go and quickly look. This is where this is the current market. Um, so, what is the opportunity here? Well, um, we definitely see in this type of reaction that we've seen before. So, this is in line with our thinking that we should be in the process of selection. So, that is appropriate. But then, one of the things here that we have to consider is that this bar right here acts as a change of character bar. And therefore, that suggests that maybe the reaction that we're going to have here is not just going to be of the same magnitude, but actually it might extend a little bit more. So what are we doing during this time? We are doing our uh, selection process and we are creating our watch list for the next potential move to the upside. That's what we are doing. At the same time, we want to see what kind of change of character we might potentially have here. How deep it's going to be? Um, is it going to be of this kind? Or is it going to be just, you know, just this, you know, of this kind? And we might have a continuation. So, um, again, we're going to go and do the same type of process that I've just identified. We could do this through the stock charts. Sector summary. Then go in um, through the sectors. And we're kind of seeing that uh, utilities are starting to outperform. Why would they outperform uh, at this point of time? And obviously, we just looked at the intraday. Um, uh, so let's look maybe for the last uh, week or so. Again, utilities are outperforming. When utilities would start to outperform, when there is some kind of flight to uh, uh, quality, uh, and, and uh, fly away from anything that was just drastically outperforming. Um, so therefore, uh, you know, also health sector, right? Let's go to the utilities. Then we would be looking at, you know, whatever is outperforming right here. So telecommunications, electricity. Um, we would go and identify the stocks here. Um, that would be our performance for the last week. And then just looking at them, you know, from the structural point of view. So definitely not this one. We want to look on the uh, maybe a large mid cap. So let's go here. Telecom Italia. Okay. And we are seeing how this stock is definitely outperforming right now. So there might be some kind of short-term swing trade right here. But then again, we would have to look at the at the whole structure. And I'm not necessarily would be excited about the uh, stock from uh, from abroad because of the gaps that we're going to have during the European session. Um, so maybe something else. Let's look at this one. And that's basically the process, you know, that we would go through. So I'm not going to go through all of the stocks, in, you know, or uh, but you kind of get an idea of what we would be looking for. Now, again, um, one of the things that we need to understand is that the trade is not happening right now. We just going through the selection process. We just looking through the industry groups and the stocks that could potentially outperform. So we yet to see how this picture is going to end. Would it end with maybe a more of the reaction and underperformance, or would the stock still outperform, um, and um, and so on and so forth? Okay, so let's come back to our slides here. So as we go through the process, we come to the level of the stock, and then we are going through the uh, structural analysis, supply and demand analysis, peer analysis as well. 
Um, one of the easiest way to visualize out performance, and I guys gave you this, you know, especially during the market outlook, we usually look at this picture, is through the relative strength line. So relative strength could be in line with the whole market. So we are looking at the stock out uh, performance, under performance relative to the whole market. We're looking at the industry group that the stock belongs and compare that to the uh, overall stock uh, market. And we are seeing that the industry group, uh, group is outperforming. Uh, there is a general trend up. And then that the stock is underperforming relative to the whole market. Um, I'm sorry, this is a sector. And then the industry group uh, in the relationship to this sector. So we saw some outperformance and now underperformance of the industry group of this sector. And then the stock relative to its peers in the group. So an underperformance. So maybe not the best stock you know, to consider um, at the point of our entry. And then uh, we would be looking at the structure as well. So there is some outperformance right here in August, but maybe the structure is not completely there. I actually remember we were discussing the stock in August, uh, and you know, um, one of the ideas was that, you know, is it done? Uh, you know, with going, uh, with with consolidating, um, and I felt at the time that maybe not. Maybe this was still phase B. And I believe Twitter went up you know, quite drastically here and then just came back to the trading range. Um, there might be just some kind of absorption in this area that is happening, but in terms of the process, this is what we would be going through. Again, let me just quickly repeat this. Uh, Top-down approach. We would look at the sectors, identify the sectors that are outperforming during the reaction that we identified as a meaningful reaction on our time frame to look for the selection and to establish the position. Then we would go to specific industry um, groups and identify the outperforming groups on that particular reaction. Then we would go to stocks and then once we look at the um, all of the parameters for the stock in terms of the outperformance, underperformance, we would go into the structural analysis and supply and demand analysis. What else? could we use? And by the way, for those of you who are interested how to create this picture right here with all of the relative strength lines, uh, here it is in stock charts. You would have to put the price performance, dollar symbol, division sign, semicolon, and then uh, the market proxy that you are comparing it to, or maybe to the industry, or maybe to the sector. Uh, and then if you want to put any moving averages, you know, obviously, you know, you can do that. Um, what else could we use for us to identify specific ideas? Um, this is the uh, momentum filtering tool, which you could probably find anywhere, you know, in any of the uh, software platforms. But specifically, you know, I, uh, you know, I was using this to identify what I call a prior leadership. The prior leadership is going to be anything before that is outperforming the market on the way up, let's say, um, for the stock that is in a potential reaccumulation area right here. We want to see an out, you know, quite an outstanding outperformance before we go into the consolidation. And the idea here is that the stock is going to continue its uptrend which was a really, uh, uh, you know, significant uptrend right here. Um, and with the contraction of the volatility, which will define the timing, and we'll talk about this a little bit later, uh, we are assuming that uh, the trend is going to continue to the upside. And those are going to be one of the best swing opportunities for the long-term swing traders. Uh, so how to identify that uh, type of wild performance? Well, basically what I'm saying here is in the last 12 months, give me all of the stocks that are giving me more than 100% return. Um, and I want to look at all of them. Um, and you can also add maybe within the last 12 months there is a really good outperformance. And yet within maybe like the last three months, we might have like an underperformance, maybe like on the uh, like plus 10, 
uh, or minus 20 uh, or minus 10 uh, between those ranges. Um, so what this says is give me this and then show me underperformance during the last like three months. Uh, you can do that as well. So any type of scans that you can create, you know, reflecting those ideas would be very helpful. And in this case, we're looking at the 12 months out performance uh, of 11% uh, here and see how one month, three months, six months are actually somewhat underperforming, especially the one and three months right here. So, and that's exactly what you're looking for. You're not looking for the progression. You're looking for the consolidation to find points of entry. Uh, and Sketches was one of those stocks that fell into on this particular day as I was doing this, um, uh, you know, uh, scanning. Uh, uh, this particular stock came up, and um, we're going to use this stock uh, for some of the ideas here. Um, and um, a question here: Where can I find this momentum filtering tool? Um, Again, this is something that was created proprietarily, but again, I would never show you something that I cannot give to you. So you can use the stock chart scanning capabilities and define these parameters as well. This is probably the most simplistic scan that you can do. You know, outperformance in the last 12 months by the specific uh, you know, percentage point. Uh, so you can definitely uh, recreate this in the stock charts. Okay, what else could we do? How else could we find the same stock? So here is a stock charts example. So what I'm doing here is I'm creating the scan uh, and this goes into the history. So I'm trying to identify the same day as I was using that same tool. And what I want to do is I want to find all of the stocks that are greater than the weekly close um, uh, of the 52 weeks uh, times two. Um, so what that does, again, it gives me uh, the stocks that are going to outperform, um, uh, you know, during that rally that this particular stock has had. And um, it shows me that prior outperformance, prior leadership, and I could definitely uh, use this uh, to identify uh, that prior leadership and to look into the structure of the stock and to define whether it's the time for the reaccumulation uh, to leave the trading range and for the price to uh, uh, resume its uptrend. Again, just different tools here that I'm showing. I've shown you the heat map, so I'm not going to really uh, show you a lot of um, the um, additional tools here with the heat map, but one of the things that you know, as we're going through sketches, um, again, I'm defining the range that I want to look at, and this is the reaction right here from February 5th of 2014 to, well, actually, this is more than a year. So in the last year, I'm saying show me um, the outperformance, um, and the footwear is definitely has a lot of rotation. Um, you know, recently um, uh, in this area right here, in this time period. And um, out of those, I want to look at the leadership. And the first stock that comes as a leadership was Skechers. And obviously, Skechers had, you know, a quite significant move after that. Investors Business Daily. Um, and I'm usually looking at IBD 50, and here it's IBD 100. But, you know, um, uh, just um, take my word for it. Um, and uh, on Saturdays, I usually would like to go uh, through all 50 stocks that they have. Um, and the reason why I want to do this is because those are the stocks that are being followed by so many swing traders uh, based on the IBD methodology. So there is an idea that the stocks are popular among a big number of traders, um, especially retail traders. And they are going to create that size that's going to create the momentum as well. Um, also, um, Investors Business Daily identifying through their selection uh, criteria the stocks that are basically already traveling up, where the confirmation of the trend is not necessary. So it kind of simplifies the process for you. Um, the only problem with this particular selection tool is that you have to understand again where 
to uh, open the position and when during which period of the market you're going to open this position but I already gave you this during the market reactions in the confirmed uptrend you're going to go to IBD scan all of those stocks and just uh, a lot of them are also going to be in the reaction but because of the prior leadership uh, you're going to have an opportunity to go in into the stocks the ones that were outperforming on the previous uh, rallies so um, IBD could be also a good use uh, the good source uh, for finding potential selection candidates um, I also like to look at scooters uh, on, on stock charts and um, Scooters actually is a fascinating um, uh, ranking tool um, and I put here you know a definition for the Scooters you know how they look at this and let's quickly look at the formula here so they have a long-term indicators uh, which defines all of the stocks that um, a specific uh, percent of stocks that are above 200 moving average so basically defining a long-term trend so long-term trend up uh, and then a 125 day rate of change the top 30 so what is this this is a momentum so they are basically saying give me all of the stocks that are long-term up and that have long-term momentum up as well you know more short-term here 125 but still it's a long-term uh, outlook there and then what what's amazing about this though is that it combines different time frames then it goes into the medium term indicators and then short term indicators and basically discusses the same idea the idea of the trend above 50 moving average and the idea of the momentum that the price is actually moving because a lot of the stocks are just going to be uh, non, not moving uh, during the periods of the consolidation. So we want to to come in and establish a prior leadership and then establish a resumption of this leadership out of reaccumulation. Uh, and then more on the short term basis, this is all about points of entry. This is identifying that uh, entry bar, so to say. So, and I encourage you to go to stock charts and uh, go to chart school uh, pages um, uh, and look at the definition of the scooters. But let's look at the results. And I've just done this actually uh, today, um, actually last night. Uh, before the workshop and I just wanted to give you this example for scooters um, and what also it does uh, it gives you different ways of how you look at the top 10 and usually I would go first to let's say this area right here large, large caps and I would look at the top 10 and then I would look at the uh, candle glance and the candle glance just basically gives me the charts with candle charts and the glance is going to give me like the top 10 and if I want the whole list I can go to the whole list uh, but basically I want to look at the top 10 during the market reactions to see what kind of stocks are actually long-term outperforming, short-term underperforming, uh, intermediate-term underperforming in some kind of consolidation and then short-term are starting to move. Think about this idea, right? Long-term outperforming, intermediate term consolidating and then short term is starting a move. Long term outperforming, intermediate consolidating, starting a move and kind of like the same everywhere. Right? In this case we don't have the long term outperformance but we're still seeing how intermediate term we are outperforming consolidating and then starting to move up um, here 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 not necessarily the best uh, here is outperformance intermediate short term outperformance intermediate short term entry and look at those guys I mean how valuable this tool is you know for our scanning if we use this scan when when the market has some kind of reactions, right? We've discussed this. We don't want to necessarily be a long-term swing trader and 
into the position right now, it doesn't make sense. You're not going to make any money because we might have a potential reaction. We might we already overextended on the upside, but during the market reactions, if you're looking at scooters, this is the picture that you're going to get. And this is exactly what we're looking for. We're looking for a prior leadership. We're looking for a possible reaccumulation consolidation, and we're looking for the point of entry. Isn't that simplified for us in uh, in such a Wyckoffian way uh, that it's just like so amazing? And you have to practice a little bit with this. Uh, you know, obviously, like this is not the greatest candidate right now, even though structurally, you know, it's just a move to the upside. Um, this one you have to be a little bit more cautious because this is the original accumulation range and not reaccumulation. So you have to account for that, but you still can trade that. Um, but everything else um, looks somewhat attractive, you know, at least for us to have a look at. And the only thing after that that you have to do is you have to go through the structure, you have to go through the supply and demand, and some of the things that are going to be crucial, and we'll talk about them, you know, within the next, you know, uh, four to five hours. But this is a great tool, so check it out, and definitely I would use this if you're a swing trader during those market reactions. All right, where are we with time? Okay, 12.22. Okay, let's go through this. You know, the more material we cover right now, the better. Um, we are kind of already through the, th uh, the most important points because now you kind of see, you know, a more systematic approach as to how you're going to do your, your selections. And now that we're going to go through uh, some of the, uh, you know, after the break, after the lunch break, we're going to go through some of the more common selection criteria for us, like structural analysis, supply and demand. So that's going to be a, uh, more uh, of the re repetition and we're going to concentrate more on the nuances and some of the variations. Um, uh, a little bit, but let's finish this, you know, the selection. So one of the uh, things here that we also have to understand, especially for the long-term swing trader, uh, and by the long-term swing trade, and again I'm going to reintroduce the definition here, uh, it, the time frame is going to be from um, from about uh, one month to about maybe six to nine months. We are basically trying to catch significant moves in the market, but we also are trying to catch, you know, by the significant, we not only mean significant in terms of the profitability, but also in terms of the duration as well. We want to make the majority of our money in the shortest period of time. That's the efficiency idea right there. So how would we do this? Um, how would we introduce this um, concept into our uh, swing trading, uh, long-term swing trading? And one of the ideas here is that um, the leadership is never a single leadership. Uh, it's not a single stock that could produce that leadership. It's usually a leadership that reflects a much bigger thematical idea. So what do I mean by that? Um, when institutions are initiating a position, they are initiating a position not in a specific single a singular stock. They are initiating a position in a theme, in an idea, um, and therefore their uh, financial commitment is going to be not to a specific stock necessarily, but a number of stocks uh, in the same industry group. Um, a number of stocks, maybe even outside of the specific industry group, but that uh, uh, those stocks also could be related to the idea of, um, uh, you know, the original idea and what we call more of the horizontal, um, you know, uh, spread of the commitment uh, by the institution. So, example of that could be if uh, an institution believes that Apple. Uh, is going to outperform for the next, you know, three, four years, and they're starting to invest in Apple, um, they're also going to consider investing into the suppliers of Apple. So maybe like, you know, suppliers uh, for the 
uh, iPhone screens, supplies for the iPhone batteries, or whatever the suppliers are for the iPhone, um, like you know, Navadir, you know, was the um, or Intel or AMD was the um, uh, was the processes, internal processes for the iPhones, I iPads, and so on and so forth. So those companies are also going to be benefiting from the sales of Apple, and therefore investing into those stocks also going to bring you know a more um, uh, you know diversification. But it's going to be the same idea for the institutions uh, to invest in those particular groups. Uh, so therefore. A more appropriate long-term swing trading is going to be based on the idea that you are trading um, the chunks of uh, business cycle swings, and you are trading the industry groups that are going to outperform within the time frame of a business swing, uh, business cycle swing, and therefore you're going to be coming in and out out of those bigger swings, and you're going to be catching the smaller swings. But during this period, institutions are going to have a rotation even within the industry group. And therefore, what seems to be a leader at one time in the industry group is going to become a laggard, and then the laggard stock is going to become a leader. And it might not be an efficient strategy for long-term trader to jump um, boats like this and go from one stock to another. Uh, a long-term buy and hold strategy is just going to be identifying the leadership earlier on and just staying with that uh, for the duration of the business cycle um, and yet adding maybe some additional positions in other stocks when they start to outperform. For a swing trading, our goal is going to be somewhat different. Our goal number one is going to be to define the uh, leading industry groups then the second goal is going to be to define the leading stocks in those groups. And then the third goal is to define the rotation within this uh, leading industry group from leaders to laggards and from laggards to leaders again. So um, we're also going to be operating on different assumptions and the assumptions are here on this slide. We're going to assume that the long-term established trend in the leadership group is going to resume its leadership after some kind of out, um, some kind of consolidation, and in anticipation of that resumption of the trend, we're going to also anticipate a resumption of the momentum, and the momentum is the key for our swing trading. We are looking to momentum to enter the position before momentum occurs, or at least in the early stages of that momentum occurring occurrence. Um, so therefore, this is going to be our uh, our goal. So where or when would we be considering swing trading um, a stock in the leading industry group? So obviously, we want to make sure that uh, the group is outperforming, um, you know, uh, other groups or the market in general. We also want to understand. Uh, what is which stock is the leader in that group identifying that leader because all other stocks are going to perform in line with that leadership it's going to mimic that leadership and um, it's going to follow that leadership um, for the stock that has been lagging and in this case I'm looking at JetBlue uh, and it has been lagging uh, as uh, some of the airline stock uh, stocks already been traveling up since 2009 and specific uh, and especially since 2012 here in 2012 we are still in the consolidation we might be in a potential phase C and then we are um, confirming the trend and it's in line with the um, uh, leadership trend for the whole industry group so what we want to see before we start uh, trade in this, swing trade in this stock, we want to make sure that the trend in the stock is established. We want to understand that the leadership is also defined. And here the leadership we are defining through the group itself, not necessarily through the stock. And then we are kind of seeing that even in the stock itself relative to the market, S&P, 
um, we are starting to see higher lows and higher highs in this area. High, 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 high. High, low, high, low. High, low, high, low. So we are establishing a trend. The stride of this trend is not um, uh, that um, uh, that steep for us yet, uh, but we're seeing that the stock is starting to outperform. And what we are doing is we are anticipating that the trend, the leadership trend in the industry group that JetBlue belongs to and in the uh, trend of the stock itself is going to resume. And as it resumes, we are going to experience some kind of momentum move uh, to the next possible consolidation within the structure of the longer term trend. And therefore, this becomes as a very, uh, very opportune place and time for us to consider opening the position in the stock that is in the leading group, but not necessarily outperforming uh, at this particular time. So um, this is kind of like a definitional um, suggestions here, ideas as to why uh, we would be looking at the uh, stocks in the leading group and how we would be looking at those stocks, uh, where specifically we would be looking for um, um, uh, position uh, entry for us. Okay, guys, I had my alarm uh, going um, starting, so it was 12.30. We're going to stop here, uh, and we're going to come back at 1.15, and I feel like my tongue needs some rest, so um, it's definitely a good time for me to stop. Uh, have a lunch or have a dinner wherever you are in the world. Um, and then 1.15 Pacific time, and I'm going to log in maybe like at 1.10, 1, uh, 1.05, uh, and just to allow you an opportunity to log in as well. We're going to um, come back, and we're going to continue with our discussion here. All right, guys, I'll talk to you then. Thank you.